So today we got a huge update to probably the most prominent AI development environment, and that is Cursor. So today Cursor launched version 2.0, which is the follow-up to their original platform. And this version 2.0 includes a number of different updates. So now Cursor actually has its own coding model. It's called Composer, kind of sticking with uh, this whole idea of the Cursor Composer, which is a chat that you can prompt into to make requests for coding. Uh, it's called Composer 1 is what the model is. But more than that, there are a bunch of different ways that this 2.0 version takes things to the next level. So first of all, there is now an agent's view for the platform. So I'm in here in a, in a project I was working on earlier. You can see the editor. This editor is what we've always been used to, right? Uh, on, my, on the left side, I have OpenAI's codex opened up. And then on the right side is the a regular cursor composer, right? This is what we're typically used to. And then in the middle uh, includes the different tabs. Usually the tabs are coding, coding files. We're going to explain what this tab is over here. But if we go to this agent's view here, you are now able to spin up multiple parallel agents while you're coding. So we can actually build out different parts of your project at the same time within the same project. And so I, I for example, did one for a fitness app where I prompted it to build a, a fitness web app to track gym progress across different exercises. And th this is my prompt over here. And then it built it out and decided to use instant DB, you know, for the database, it showed a list of steps that it was going to take. So like kind of like a planning phase, and then it went ahead and started to do it. And then while that was happening, I then spun up another agent to create an, uh, a dashboard an analytics dashboard for the fitness agent. So while this was actually working, the uh the primary app was also working as well so this was happening simultaneously and you can spin up up to eight of these agents at the same time and so this is building upon what we've seen with just the idea of parallel agents um these parallel agents you can uh, you you've sort of been able to spin these up outside of the ide but it's all kind of bringing this concept uh in-house now so that is that is huge so another area where this cursor agent really thrives is you can now view your project locally within the IDE. So previously, if you wanted to look at how your current project was looking, then you would have to take the, in this case, it's localhost 3000, copy it, put it into an actual web browser like Google Chrome or Firefox, and then run it there to see um, how it's actually what you've actually created to that point. Now it's within the IDE. So you see here, this is what it actually came up with for the fitness um, tracking app. And not only can you view it within the IDE, you can actually select elements here. So if you click on select elements at the top right, you can literally reference these elements. So for example, if I wanted to take this workout frequency um, section right here, I can click on it and it'll reference it in the chat and then i can then go and you know make changes to it and so that makes it significantly easier to now make changes when you're when you're coding um of course i mentioned the composer one which is i believe three to four times cheaper than all competing models gpt5 you know cloud sonnet 4.5 so all of that is cool but that's not it what else the cursor composer uh, the uh, cursor 2.0 does is it can actually uh you can actually control your browser so if you go down to where the chat is you'll see right here connected to external browser so you can connect it to google chrome uh, you can connect it to the browser tab uh, or you know leave it off and it's a tool that gets managed within the cursor settings so browser automation so this is this is browser use now brought to cursor and so what this means is that if you look at these screenshots right here what happened is I'm able to literally prompt it, tell it to, so in this case, I said to go find inspiration from competing fitness apps. It was able to bring screenshots, it was able to take screenshots, bring those screenshots in as reference, as context, to then come up with a plan on what we could potentially do 
for uh, for this new app that we're gonna that we're uh, kind of workshopping, and it all happened in an automated way, right? So it was able to to take control over the browser, and so it now has brought this new feature of the browser control, browser use to uh, to cursor, and so that was very cool to see as well. So as you can see, a bunch of new features. Uh, it's also like a, a even I would say an improved feel to it. Uh, it can also test what you've done, right? It'll run and 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 correct itself and reprompt based off of previous prompts. And you could again still use the original editor if that that's your decision. And you have, for example, the Codex extension. I believe Claude also has an extension as well. But um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is really huge, and and it's cool to see Cursor really keep up with a lot of this the development happening in this space. Right. We've mentioned Gemini a lot lately. We've mentioned, um, you know, Codex. Right. We're seeing what's going on with Claude and Claude Code. So, um, you know, Cursor has been the environment that I've gotten the most comfortable with out of everything out there. So, um, yeah, shout out to them for 2.0. And, and this should really propel the work of a lot of people who are doing AI assisted development using cursor for for different means and um and and it's exciting to see what what will come uh from this. So, yeah, uh definitely something to check out and uh cursor 2.0. I will see you all for the next one.